Uh, hello and uh, welcome to today's podcast. Um, my name is Carl Smith. I'm the owner and uh, business coach at Concept Fitness Consultancy. Uh, the intention of these podcasts is, uh, is to offer trainers support. Um, and uh, and right now, more than ever, there shouldn't be a, a shortage of help available. Uh, my intention is that these podcasts will be around 20 minutes in duration, hence the name of the podcast, 20 Questions in 20 Minutes. And, and each week, I'll interview a different coach or trainer who's making it work right now. If you've got any questions, please just drop a comment in the comments box below. Uh, but right now, um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Mr. Christopher Gardner. Uh, Chris, are you there, mate? I am. Hi, Carl. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Um, Chris, I'll, I'll just, just talk to the guys just a little bit about your your background, um, and then I'm, I'm going to pass it over uh, to you just to tell us a little bit more of the detail around about, you know, why you uh, started the business, what sort of motivated you to do that, and, um, you know, and, and I suppose we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but Chris, Chris, as far as, uh, as long as I've known you, you've, you've run a, a very successful uh, one-to-one business up in Stockton, um, and you've done that, um, I, I want it at least for a number of years, and you can tell us a little bit more uh, about that in a second. Um, I think you were delivering, and um, the last time we spoke, um, this was sort of pre-lockdown um, or pre-lockdown one, um, you were delivering around 30 to 40 face-to-face -face sessions per week. Um, uh, you, again, tell me tell me um, uh, what those numbers look like in, in a second. Um, when I caught up with you the, the other day, though, you, you, you were talking to me about how you, you spent the last sort of couple of weeks, maybe months, um, creating an online um, business. And I thought that that, that would be really um, helpful to give the guys a bit of an insight today in terms of how you've done that, um, how you've, um, what, what processes you've followed, you know, the, the, I, I'm, I'm conscious that there's a, a, a fear potentially that, that moving your business online um, might be really costly. Um, so if you can, I'm not going to ask you to sort of tell me how much it exactly costs, but to give us a bit of an insight, I suppose, in terms of, you know, how how easy it was or, or how difficult it, it, it may have been um but look um without uh, further uh, ado uh, let me uh, let me pass pass it over to you sir um so can you can you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about um about how you started your business up and, and why i suppose yes um so as you say i'm chris gardner um i've been a personal trainer at exercise for less for about three years now um known you since pretty much day one um i got into personal training basically I got qualified and then came straight to exercise for less that was how my career kind of started I mean I'm 31 now came in at 28 which for the most part averages I think is quite late on in the game for a personal training you tend to find it probably a little bit long a little bit younger mm -hmm. longevity wise I can obviously last a little bit longer um but I'd I'd been in the gym since probably 17, 18, doing bits and bobs. Always enjoyed it, never really been too committed and things like that until probably 23. Started to help a lot of friends get into the shape that they wanted to be in. Started to educate myself a lot more without gaining any specific qualifications, but finding that it was kind of a, it was more than just a, a hobby type thing, even though I was making zero money from it at the time. Yeah. Um, so whilst working in a, in a different position, gained my level two and level three, and then here we are. You um, you, you said you, you've been operating now as a, for, for around about three years. Um, yeah. How long do you think? Uh, how long do you think it took you to sort of to build up enough of a client base, I suppose, to 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 I suppose define making it work for you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. At the beginning, I was I was a little bit nervous about that. That was kind of my biggest hang up on leaving the guarantees of a nine to five and a steady yeah. income uh, and moving into something where at the time I was on a partially employed model. So I was still going to kind of bring a wage, but it wouldn't have mean anything kind of what I'd been used to. So there was a certain amount of pressure that I placed upon my own shoulders to get that done. Um, I was quite fortunate in the fact that I was made aware right at the beginning, um, being present is kind of everything, especially yeah. at the beginning of your personal training career. Uh, so for the first month, I would say I spent pretty much morning, noon and night of at least Monday to Friday, uh, sometimes the weekends as well. Just being present, being kind of available around the gym, saying hello, minding my P's and Q's, being polite, offering little hints and tips to people who might need it. And I'll be honest, within the first two weeks, I'd kind of I'd hit 
25, 30 hours a week of solid personal training. Wow. And it, it just grew kind of steadily from there, really. Wow. I mean, that, that, that's, that's quick. Um, it was, it was very quick. It was, it was quicker than I thought it would be. And, and based on kind of what I'd been told throughout the gym as well, it was, it was fairly quick in general. Yeah, no, well, well done. Well done. Um, when um, you started your sort of PT journey, um, what did you think it was going to be like before you got started and, and, and were you right? Um, I w- I'll be honest, I was right and I was wrong. I didn't really know any personal trainers personally. Um, so I didn't really have a lot of experience to draw from. Um, I would I kind of expected there to be some, maybe a little bit of stagnation at the beginning, a lot of a lot of long hours, um, which I was exactly right about. Um, but the reward is is kind of worth it. It's it's not something. It's like I say, I've worked in some capacity since I was sixteen. Didn't join a, a gym until I was twenty eight, at working as a personal trainer. And I've never had the kind of job satisfaction from any other job that I get from being a personal trainer. And it's it's very, very different. Not only do you get kind of the big wins when someone reaches their their full their full goal that they've come to you for, yeah. it's those little hourly wins every session that you have in the day that kind of keeps things ticking over. So that part was actually greater and nicer than I expected. But there were certainly some parts, for example, the the very long days, the planning that were as expected or sometimes perhaps a little bit harder than expected to be honest yeah no, i can appreciate that um but if, if there was one thing that you um you wish you'd known be- before you got started that you maybe not now know in hindsight um is there is there one thing that you could put your finger on um well, one thing would be quite hard to be honest and it, that would probably change <laughs> it would probably change daily to be honest with you yeah and um, there's a there's a few different ways to look at it really so i mean social media I'll be honest, I know it seems quite off on a tangent type thing, but the power of social media, now that makes me sound really old, only being 31, mm. um, but understanding how how that can keep you present and in people's minds. Uh, and if you are struggling for, for hours and for business and things like that, having a having a presence on there can keep things can keep things going even in the hardest of times, such yeah. as such as now going through the second lockdown. Um Within the gym, I think there's there's nothing better. Uh, I think Art had touched on this on it on the previous podcast. The basics, just yeah. don't neglect the basics. And again, I was I was testament to this when I first started. I trained a lot of friends. I trained myself for a number of years, and throwing around these different fancy exercises because they think you they think they look good doesn't necessarily get you to where you need to be. And educating your clients on the fact that every session isn't going to be completely different. There are an element of kind of meat and potato exercises that you've got to get in there to make sure that they reach their goals and helping them understand that is something that I wish I'd started from day one. It's another theme, I think, that's sort of running running along the, the, these podcasts that um, there are some uh, general sort of rules, I suppose, that, 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 that will make a lot of sense to people, I suppose. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, what... Um, uh, so let, let, how, many, how many sessions a week are you, you, let's say um i know that this year's been a bit of a weird year for everybody but what um yeah. what uh how many sessions a week were you delivering um prior to to call it the first lockdown i suppose and uh, about 60. wow so six, were they all one-to-one sessions or do you do group training as well i do two groups i offer two group training sessions and they are they run for two hours each per week so four hours of group in total per week and then the rest was one-to-one and how many people do you um do you, do you get in a group what's it what's a, a group size for you i cap it at 10 okay i suppose <clears throat> lockdown has caused a, a bit of a hiccup with the with the groups hasn't it um yes uh, so um so you're delivering a lot of hours um there um you you, you do some group is there a, did you have a sort of um a, a preference to to how you sort of uh, well, do you enjoy the group side of things um, better than the one-to-one or, or is it the way around? I think they both serve a purpose. Um, the one-to-one I probably do prefer um, purely for the fact that you can kind of really educate and yeah. give people, as much as you can do this to an extent in the groups, you can kind of give people more of a, obviously a one-to-one education on why you're doing certain things. And it's going to be, you can cater things much towards their specific goals yeah and kind of make sure 
if there is a time scale that they're going to be with you, that they have the tools and education required to be able to take themselves further after they leave you. Because um, PT, as much as I do have a lot of clients who've been with me from, from day one because they need me for accountability, um, I've got a lot of guys who will come and go and then they may come back for a time. Um, whereas group, with, with me allowing kind of 10 people, I think any more than that, it kind of becomes a little too impersonal. But with the 10 people, you've still got, you've got enough time to get around people and tweak form and, and things like that. You can also, I've got them also joined into WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups to make sure they all kind of, they all stay friendly with each other. They all pass on hints and tips yeah, and, and things like that. So it's also a case of not everybody's either has the means to pay for one-to-one -one personal training and group is much more accessible yeah. because obviously you get, you get a lot more out of, you're going to get 12 sessions for a, a fraction of the price. Um, and it's also a confidence thing, I believe, to a degree. Um, there's people who would come into a group setting perhaps with a friend or a couple of friends that wouldn't necessarily approach me for one-to-one. -one. And sometimes it can bridge the gap. Some people will go from group to one-to-one -one and sometimes vice versa. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a good business model. I think you, you uh, one potentially also feeds the other, doesn't it? That yeah. you know, some of your group sessions might decide at some point they want some extra sort of support and go with the one-to-one -one route and potentially it be the, the one-to-ones might enjoy the, uh, the, the the community aspect potentially of, of training in the group. So it makes yeah. sense. And it, it's, I guess it's a relatively new um, sort of model for personal training to, to have to, to, to run both. And the majority of trainers that I've spoken to over the last, last couple of weeks uh, that everyone has a, a a certain volume of group sessions that they, they use but the majority do seem to prefer the one-to-one -one, which um for the, for the reasons you, you've mentioned so um interesting okay well look, so i, I think we, we, it, it's, it's pretty clear that you've got a, a a very successful personal training business what one thing i would wouldn't mind um just asking and um what would you say to, to people that say look you know um uh, and this is not me disrespecting Stockton, but uh, what, what, <laughs> there are quite a few other towns that um, might have the, the same um, uh, or, or get the same sort of feedback. What, to say that you've been delivering 60 sessions a week, I think is incredible. Um, also, um, what would you say to people that say, look, there's, there's no money out there right now, um, you know, for, for people to spend on one-to-one? On, on -one? I think that's incorrect. Um, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I believe if I was to come in now as a as a newly qualified personal trainer, I would find it harder to start now than I did then. That being said, there is still plenty of people who are looking for personal training. There's people who are still asking me for personal training, and I'm having to say no because I've got other commitments and yeah. I'm, I'm having to put kind of push that back and and make allowances where I need to kind of look after myself to a degree. Um, but there is, there's plenty of, there's, there's plenty of it to be done, whether that's, whether that's in the gym, whether that's online, whether that's on zoom, whether that's in the park, there is, it's, it's crying out for it to some, to some capacity, whether it's like you say, a three pound boot camps in a park mm -hmm. or whether it's really niche personal training online or whether it's one-to-one, -one. there will always be a space for it for in some capacity. All right. Well, let, let, let's, let's dig into that a little bit then. So you as I say, you, you clearly got a very successful, successful sort of face-to-face -face business. So, what what ha what happened in, in was it March the twenty second? I think when when the gym was closed for the first time. Um, what what did you do? Tried not to panic, um, which I think was the case for a lot of people. Um, I, I stayed I stayed in contact, which I think was the biggest thing. Um, I messaged all of my clients immediately, um, advising them on what I was going to do and basically seeking their feedback as quickly as possible. I had some guys who it was a struggle to pay for, mm -hmm. uh, but they wanted to continue because they had the gym and they had the facilities when they could really see a difference. Um, I, but then they chose, to, they chose to stop. I had a handful of guys, kind of one-to-one -one guys who wanted to continue and would either just take home workout plans, they would do Zoom calls, but then fortunately both of my groups, they both continued as well. So. As much as I saw quite a drastic reduction um, in income, there was still a, a steady flow there. What, what would you? Uh, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm expecting to sort of um, you to know this off the top of your head, but um, what percentage ish do you think you managed to retain? Um, was it fifty percent? Was it a touch more? Was it a touch less? 
less. I would say probably a third. Okay. Give or take. I mean, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but give or take over the course of the four months through the first lockdown, roughly a third. So you, you retained a third, um, which yeah. would be full income, but effectively um, that the rest um, decided that, that they were going to wait till the clubs yes. out. Is that the sort of the mentality? Exactly. Some people kind of, they, they, they mainly saw the personal training for the gym facility um, and they could, whilst they understood that I could offer them things at home, they didn't necessarily feel that they could get as much benefit, which I could, I could understand to a degree. Um, and I, I tried to reason with that side of them, but it was a case of, I knew they'd be there when they came back. And if they needed any help, I was always still checking in on them weekly just to make sure everything was going as it needed to be kind of physically and mentally. And then knowing that they would be returning as soon as the gyms opened up again. Okay. So obviously um, that, lockdown went on for a lot longer um, than, than anyone anticipated did you find that as that sort of lockdown progressed that certain people decided i could i'm not going to wait any longer i'm going to i'm um, going to try you know training outside or, or online pt or yes just sit and wait yeah no um i had a couple of extra guys uh, either join into my groups uh, and kind of take up that sort of method um, which kind of had a little bit of camaraderie so even though you're at home in your garage or in your living room at 6am doing a, a zoom boot camp as it were yeah you kind of you don't necessarily feel like you're doing it alone yeah. uh, and I also had another couple of guys come back to the one-to-one -one style personal training again via via zoom with what limited equipment and facilities they had access to cool and would you say you're you're a particularly sort of techie person so you know actually you're adapting your business to, to delivering on Zoom it was quite an easy thing or, or is tech you know, not your thing and you, you've sort of um, had to learn as you go? I wouldn't say I'm particularly techie. Um, Zoom itself is, Zoom couldn't be more straightforward. So that was, that was nice and simple for me. I'd used that prior um, when I was actually getting my personal training qualification. That was my mentor's preferred method of, of communication. Oh, great. So it was it was nice and simple for me to kind of jump back into, and it's it's very simple to educate people on who've who've never used it before. I understand a lot of people use Teams and things like that as well, which is something yeah. I've personally not used. But Zoom was very straightforward. I think the amount of quizzes and social gatherings they had in the first lockdown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got pretty quickly used to how to use Zoom. So it was it was fairly straightforward in that respect. All right. Okay. Well, I'm I'm interested to know how you um how you because i know recently you, 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 you've um, you've gone through a bit of a, a, a rebranding exercise for your business um so maybe you could tell us a little bit about that um and also you you've um you, you've developed a, an online um system i think um, and uh, you you are using some sort of tech to, to deliver that so it'd be interesting to know how you've how you've done that if you don't mind um, telling us a little bit about about that journey yeah um so back in january um well before covid was a thing um <laughs> I'd, I'd always had this this plan where after three four five years of face-to-face uh, -face training that i would look to take certainly a percentage of my business online um because i don't get me wrong i love being in the gym i love delivering one-to-ones and group sessions but there is a limit as to what you can do within a gym um like i say 60 hours a week was kind of really pushing it for me mm. um, to try and get my batteries recharged and make sure i'm kind of on form for every session so if I could reach more people through an online platform, that was kind of music to my ears. Um, it, it maybe meant that as people started to drop off within the gym, I could maybe just keep those off and keep those hours free and maybe expand the online business further. Um, so it, it was something that was kind of in the back of my mind. And I had a couple of, a couple of friends, well, mainly one friend um, who was a client's husband, kind of discussing this with me. He was a, he's a graphic designer amongst other things. So back in the early part of the year, we kind of got our heads together and started to do a, a few bits and pieces regarding Limitless Personal Fitness, which is, which is my brand now, my online footprint. And then as soon as lockdown hit, it was kind of a, right, this needs to no longer be a, a pipe dream type thing and no longer be something that's just kind of mothballed, but something that I need to kind of develop some traction with yeah. and, and really start putting some, putting some work into it and what better time than when I've lost <laughs> um, 70, well, 
60 something 70 percent of of my of my business and my mm. my time is a lot more available um so over the course of the of the four months i start to develop an app with the help of the software pt distinction okay. um yep. which i know if uh, i'm a few people use i don't know any personally that use but i'm in a i'm in a facebook group with other users etc um so there's there's plenty of help to be had on there and it's i mean online personal training can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be it can be a facebook page with a private group it can be an app it can be this that and the other um i've decided to go a slightly more complex route um i just think for me it, it just seems a little more I want to use the term professional without kind of throwing any shade at anybody else who doesn't necessarily use an app. Sure. Um, I just think it's kind of a lot more accessible and not that Facebook isn't accessible, but I just think it kind of gives it a, an element of, of, of being professional. Um, within that app, it's got a, it's got a thousand different things. So it, it offers everything that I would offer without just without me being there. Mm -hmm. So there's individual workout plans, there is macro setting, habit tracking, it hooks up to my fitness pal, measurements, you've got weekly check-ins, you've got, again, I'll be offering Zoom calls or FaceTime calls throughout that for more personalised check-ins and things like that. So it's, for me, it is it is definitely the way forward. It's probably 99% finished now with the, with the goal for it to be ready and going for January 2021. And how long is it um, taking to sort of get um because I, I there's a obviously they, they I believe that they uh, allow you to sort of um white label it so to speak so you can you can brand up the the app can't you yes so everything says limitless personal fitness it's everywhere um <laughs> just to make sure that it it is mine um like i say everybody gets their own logins and things like that so it's it's as personal as it can be with a fraction of the cost i mean having an app i think i read something the other day Having an app with membership and updating it, and all the all the updates that need to be done, all the licensing and things like that, can sometimes come to fifteen to twenty thousand pounds a month. Mm -hmm. um, that is obviously not something that I can afford. Um, but if you if you get it through a brand such as PT Distinction, it comes in at a fraction of the price. Yeah. So it's and it's a very professional looking and individualized program. Well, here's a question for you then. So <clears throat> did. If you if you were if you were a brand new trainer getting started right now with with no client base, would you would you would you have taken the jump and and spent the money on a on a on an app, or would you have done something different to get started? Or do you think that there's value in, in just just biting the bullet, I suppose, and 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 and, and, and buying an app from the from the start? That's a good question. To be honest, I think if I was new, um, I would probably just go Facebook. Mm. um and and other kind of social media means kind of temporarily yeah i would i would say and this comes from speaking to other people as well i wouldn't suggest necessarily taking it online unless you've coached people face to face first yeah um there's a lot of reasons for that so for example i mean you could get two different clients in there who have the same goals but that you haven't seen someone's form, you haven't seen someone's kind of injuries, their, what they can do, what they can't do, what they like, what they dislike. And whilst they can tell you this in an email, yeah. unless you see that face to face, you can't really plan for that. Um, so without, and it's, it's a lot of cues as well. So someone might email me now and say, oh, I've got a problem with this joint or I can only reach to here. It's all about knowing how to regress things in a certain way. And without doing that for a number of years face to face, I think your online kind of education, your online delivery can yeah. maybe take a bit of a hit because yeah. you aren't quite as where you need to be with having without having that experience. So is, is your intention to to move a portion of your existing face to face business online or is you, was your intention to maintain your your face to face business whenever you know whenever you can um, and the online would be an additional the online would be an additional. Um, I do have a couple of guys who are interested, who are kind of competent enough to really push themselves in the gym and understand everything that we're doing. But it is more of an accountability aspect who will be wanting to transition online. Yeah. Um, but mainly this, the online part is for, is for new people. Uh, it's for people okay. all over the world. I'll be looking to keep as much of my one-to-one -one going and then devoting a, a, a few days a week 
just specifically to the online section. Okay, well that's interesting. So effectively, what your 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 business models are proposing then is that you're you're adding another another tier to to, to your, your offering or another product, so to speak. So you've got your one to one, you've got group, and now you're going to have a third offering which will be online. And um, exactly, will your will you be charging more or less for online? About the same, to be honest. Um, and this is this is something that took a long time to kind of fall down on the idea of because in the beginning. Um, you kind of get when you're trying to do things online and you don't have the facility to a, to a degree you kind of feel like you're cheating them mm. but at the end of the day they're paying for you they aren't paying for they're paying the membership for the gym they can do whatever they want with that but they are paying for your time yeah your qualifications your expertise so that don't devalue yourself um so i'm i'm pretty much charging the same as what is kind of a, an average package within the gym yeah for for a full month and it would be it would run on a month to month basis. Yeah, I mean it, it depends what how you 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 there are that, that many different ways to do it. And I think if you're if you're investing a, a portion of your time that um, that you're charging for, then then that 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 should be consistent across the board. So uh, that, that that makes sense to me. Um, yeah. Okay, look, I, I won't um, dig dig in too too much detail. I'm not going to give away or you've given away all your all your, all your secrets, <laughs> so to speak. But um, <laughs> is there any? I mean. Um, is there any bit of bit of tech outside of um, your, your app that you're going to use? Is there anything else that, that you'd recommend to a new trainer? The only other thing that I've ever really used and I've ever kind of really counted upon for again for accountability for my guys is my fitness pal. Um, yeah. There's no other there's no other tech that for me simplicity wise really touches that as regarding a calorie counter. Yeah. Um, and that is that is all it should really be used as as a calorie counter. Um, it's the educational part. No one wants to track calories for morning, noon, and night, twenty four seven, for the rest of their lives, unless you are going to compete in some kind of show. Yeah. Um, but for for the first month, maybe two months, um, however long it takes you to kind of get a grasp on on what it is you're eating and where it is you're going wrong and, and what it is you need to do to perhaps put yourself into a calorie deficit if that is the goal you're after. Um, it is invaluable to be honest uh, and it's another reason why i've i've also hooked that up to my app <laughs> nice nice i think you, you're right i think uh, my experience with, with, with calorie tracking are that certainly apps that do 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 that for you it's, it's the benefit of, of keeping that that um that client's um mindset thinking about their uh, their nutrition whilst they're on whatever plan you're you're delivering it, it it's not it's something you, you will expect somebody to do for the rest of their lives but it absolutely educates them but also keeps them physically uh, interacting with something um which yeah. keeps them on on plan exactly so, i mean i mean the, the most the most sessions i give to any particular person in a week is four which is a lot yeah. um, now if i'm with them for four hours there's a hundred and i think it's what is there 160 hours in a week yeah that's correct yeah so, I mean, accountability is the biggest thing. So, I mean, I can push you as hard as possible. Say, say I knock 700 calories off you in that session. Doesn't mean anything if you go home and eat whatever you choose. So yeah. education, education regarding things like that, for me, is just as important as the session, if not more important. As you say, for, for most people who, den- who do tend to come into the gym, it is a weight loss strategy they're after. Not yeah. necessarily a huge part of it is kind of, muscle building or bodybuilding or anything like that that will is a is a great facilitator and it's it's great to make things look better when you do start to lose that weight that you're after but the be all and end all really is the is the calorie deficit and the education around that to make sure they can do it by themselves yeah no 100 percent um another question for you then um is there any particular bits of kit um so a, a gym equipment that you that you couldn't live without Oof, uh, to be honest, just the free weights. To be honest, um, there are many things that I would wish that I wish we did have in my gym um, that we don't. Um, but it, to a degree, that's it is a, it's a positive and a negative because it kind of makes you get creative with the things you've got. Yeah. Um, but free weights for me is just golden. The things you can do with them, kind of beyond the typical exercises, you've still got your meat and potatoes in there, your squats, your deadlifts, your bench, your your rows, everything like this. Um, I do love a good cable machine, don't get me wrong, uh, because again, uh, there's a thousand different things you can do on there and it, it works completely differently to how, a, how a, a dumbbell or a barbell would work. 
and it's also a lot safer for a, a certain a certain selection of people. Um, so just just between those two, I think I could make a, a half decent gym. But there's a that being said, there's a few other things I wish we did have. Well, I mean, has has lockdown um, taught us something about um, you know being able to adapt um, our, our workouts to to the, the to, to what's available you know the body weight workouts um have never been so popular because then um, the, the, in, in in a lot of cases that there's not uh, there hasn't been the option you know it's a real nicety i mean i can't wait to get back into a gym myself so um to uh, to, to use some of the kit you know i i think certainly things that i miss um with with a, my little home setup is a, is a lap pull down or a, something to train your your back because the yeah uh, free, free weights albeit a bar and a, uh, just, a, just don't seem to hit it in the same way so there's, there's absolutely a, you know um equipment in, in in gyms that um that that can't be replicated outside but we have learned i think to 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 adapt um because exercise um is 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 crucial and um, and uh what uh whatever the, the current mindset is it, it is essential isn't it no, it is 100 percent, and i mean i think more at the moment for the for the mental capacity um yes it is it's it's not a gym isn't required for to elicit fat loss um to for the majority of people who come to the gym for them to reach their goals they don't need they don't need the gym itself but it's kind of the the community aspect the yeah. the, the traveling to the gym getting into that mindset then kind of de-stressing the day, going home level headed and kind of and hitting repeat is, is something that everybody's missing at the moment. I mean, yeah. I miss it. I live in a I live in a flat. Um, me trying to train in my living room just doesn't have the same the same hit to it as it does going to the gym, putting my headphones in, doing a certain exercise or a certain a certain set of exercises and then coming home feeling yeah. exhausted. There's a, only a certain amount of press ups and pull ups and things you can do at home um whilst that is still good and it is still it is still helping people progress and maybe yeah. not letting people kind of fall backwards the gym is for me essential yeah i agree um uh, what's the most positive thing that has come out of 2020 for you mate um as selfish as it sounds the app um, i think yeah. if we didn't have lockdown i don't think i would have made any progress with it um, I dropped to working Monday to Thursdays so I could work on the app on a Friday. Um, but I found that I was that tired and I had that many other things to catch up on and work to do for the clients I had Monday to Thursday for the following yeah, week. Left, I was I was I was kind of treading water. Uh, so it wasn't really making any great progress. So as as much as it's a negative that we've gone into a lockdown, I'm kind of taking the silver linings from it that it's it's kind of given me a bit of a kick and had pushed me in the right direction good good, uh, good good attitude mate i think that that's 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 kind of the um the, the the resounding sort of benefit i think that um that this has given us it's given us time to um, re either readdress or, or plan or sort of do some of the things that, that that we just weren't capable of before because we were we were too busy so um the the look, firstly uh, let me let me thank you um Chris for today. I think um, there's some really, really good stuff that, uh, that, that people could take away and, and might support them with their own businesses. So thank you for sharing that today. So I'm, I'm going to finish on one um, what, one final question for you, mate. Um, what what do you think the uh, the future looks like for for, for PT and, and, and the fitness industry as a, as a whole? I think it looks positive. Um, I don't think I don't think COVID is is going to destroy anything. Obviously. Small businesses are going to struggle if this lockdown continues any further. Um, as regarding kind of corporates and things like that, I think it does look very positive. I would just stress that be prepared. Um, and that's kind of going to individual trainers rather than the, the gyms themselves. I can't really state anything for those. But if you are a personal trainer, kind of take heed in what's happened now and obviously what happened back in March and have have a plan for if this does happen and make sure all of you guys are aware as to as to the opportunities that you've got that you can do outside of the gym whether that be online or within the park or on zoom and things like this so as much as things things may take a slightly different turn next year um we may be back to normal and COVID may be a thing of the past there may be more episodes of of small stint lockdowns or a longer stint lockdown so just kind of adapt prepare your clients 
and, and get ready for that. And don't be surprised if it does come. Great, uh, great final words, mate. Chris, thank you very much again for your time today. Um, and thank uh, you very much. Catch up soon. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Cheers, Carl.